Exactly, Bess is tight, but Bess was so depressed after she broke up with Paul. I'm delighted to see her go out with anybody. Phyllis, what kind of boy do you think is Bess's type? Oh, you know, someone cultured, sophisticated, polished, urbane, accomplished. But what if Bess doesn't want someone like that? Well, I'll grab the little bugger for myself. <laughs> well, should we go to bed, dear? Oh, yes, dear. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jonathan, it just occurred to me. We spent the whole evening listening to fertility music. <laughs> you don't think that you and I... <laughs> At our age, dear, I hardly think so. <laughs> I don't know what your doctor told you, but my doctor assured me I'm tone deaf. <laughs> And how long have you known him? No, Harriet, not that kind of trouble. It's Bess. What's the matter? I don't know. She wasn't in her bed this morning, and it hadn't been slept in. Oh, I'm going out of my mind. She was home all evening, and she went to bed early. She must have sneaked out during the night. Harriet, what am I going to do? Now, now, Phyllis, please don't panic. <laughs> don't panic. Whatever you do, don't panic. Good morning, my oh, girls. I'm glad you're here. Phyllis is really worried. What's wrong? Oh, Dan. What happened? Oh, Leonard. <laughs> Bess wasn't home last night. And this morning, her bed hadn't even slept in. She's missing. Oh, Harriet. Oh. <laughs> Trouble. Did you look for her? I searched the house. Under the bed? Under the bed? Girls that age can do some crazy things. My sister Louise used to sleep in a bathtub every night. Lena, that's not relevant. Sure it is. One morning, her bathtub hadn't been slept in. <laughs> Did you and Bess argue about anything? Why is that important? Because sometimes kids hassle with their mothers and then they take off. Now, try and think, Phyllis. Well... Bess and I did have a little tiff yesterday morning about leaving the bedroom in a mess. You know, not making the bed and leaving clothes all over the place. But we settled that. I promised I'd be neater in the future. <laughs> oh, Dan, what am I going to do? What, what if I don't even hear from Bess? Could we call the police, maybe? Right. I'll call the police and start getting a missing persons report. Thank you, Leonard. Look, the thing to do is not to worry. There must be some logical explanation for all this. Just keep cool and don't let your imagination run away with you. I'll try. By any chance, was there the footprint of a giant ape outside her window? <laughs> Maybe my nephew Mark knows where she is. He's staying with my mother. I'll give him a call. Oh, thank you. Supervisor, Letty's office. Audrey, when? What did she say? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Are you sure you got that right, Audrey? Could you give me that again? Uh, yes, right, right. The, the Bluebird Motel, Las Vegas. Right, right. Uh, thank you, Audrey. I, I don't understand. Let's do it. Dan, Audrey just called. She just heard from Beth. It, it seems she's staying in some motel in Las Vegas. I just don't understand. Well, I just spoke to my mother. She told me that Mark had borrowed some money from her and said he'd be back in a few days. Mark? Yeah. And his bed wasn't slept in last night either. Oh, Dan. Oh, Harriet. I just got a terrible feeling in the pit of my stomach that somewhere in Las Vegas there's a bed that has been slept in. <laughs> You came to save me, my gift from 
Thin, don't you think? Well, it wasn't until you asked him to slip it under the door. <laughs> Listen, why don't we get ourselves together and go out and see the town? Beautiful idea. In which case, I think I'll take a shower. <laughs> Who is it? Your mother. <laughs> Thank heaven I got here in time. In time for what? Oh, Bess, I was so worried. I, I had no idea where you were. Mom, that's why I called. Bess, whatever insanity made you do this, forget it. I forgive you. I hate you, but I forgive you. <laughs> now get your things together. Let's go home. Hey, Bess, hot water stopped. Mrs. Lister. <laughs> Please tell the young man to put his clothes on. I got clothes on. He's got clothes on. Time to put some more clothes on. Mom, what's the big deal? If you saw Mark on the beach like this, you wouldn't say a word. Since I've been a widow, I keep my eyes closed on the beach. <laughs> Mark, just put your pants on. It's easier. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Is he dressed? He's got his pants on, Mom. <laughs> Mrs. Lister? Don't allow me. <laughs> I have one simple question. What are you doing in this cheap motel with my daughter? Hey, what do you mean cheap? This is six bucks a night. <laughs> Answer my question. What are you doing here? Well, I was just getting ready to go out and see Las Vegas with my wife. You brought your wife here too? <laughs> Bess is my wife. We were married last night in the wedding chapel next door. Married? <laughs> Bess, what am I sitting on? Wedding pizza. Mary, and it's such a tender age. Mom, I'm 18 years old. Who's talking about you? I'm too young to have a married daughter. <laughs> Just tell me this. If you did want to get married, why didn't you come to me? I thought we trusted each other. Mom, I knew if I came to you, you'd want to have a big wedding, and I know you can't afford it. Well, I may not be rich, but I could certainly afford something better than this, or this, or that. <laughs> oh. Oh, Mom, I knew you wouldn't be happy about this, and maybe we were wrong to go about it this way, but... At the time, it seemed like the best thing. I'm really sorry if you're unhappy. Oh, oh Biff. The important thing is, what do we do now? How do we deal with this situation? That's the answer. An annulment. An annulment? Yes, of course, an annulment. But you can only get an annulment under certain circumstances. Now, tell me. Have you two... Uh, 
so much for plan A. <laughs> well, I suppose we'll just have to apply for a regular divorce. Mother, please try to understand. Mark and I are married, and we are going to stay married. There will be no annulment and no divorce. No annulment and no divorce. All right, I accept that. Would you mind if I murdered him? <laughs> Bess, I, I do not, I cannot, I will not accept this marriage. Bess, I want to talk with you alone. Mark? Yes, Mom? <laughs> Would you mind waiting in the other room? Oh, sure. Sure. Yes, I don't understand. I, I just, don't, just don't understand. You mean why I married? No, what you married. <laughs> I mean, what could you possibly see in that, 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 that sheepdog? <laughs> Come on, Mother, you're just jealous of anyone that has longer hair than you do. <laughs> I mean it, Bess. <laughs> Why did you choose him? Oh, Mom, who knows why people fall in love? I know Mark's a little unusual, but maybe that's what I like about him. He's gentle, considerate, he's open. Mom, he doesn't get up every morning wanting to beat up the world. He makes me feel like he needs me, and I think we can have a good life together. That all sounds very beautiful, Bess. And I wish, oh God, how I wish, for your sake, that you were right. But, Bess, this marriage just simply can't last. There are just too many things working against it. What's working against it? Me. <laughs> has made a mistake. But as her mother, I feel that I have to try to do something about it. If she weren't on the rebound from her romance with Paul, she never would have run off with a goof like Mark. Hey, that's my nephew you're talking about. Excuse me. A goof like your nephew. That's better. Well, I think it's kind of romantic. You know, I almost eloped when I was 18. But my uh, minister taught me out of it. Said I'd have to find a man first. Mister, I wish there was something we could do, but I don't think there is. Bess and Mark are adults. They can do whatever they want. They are not adults. Bess is 18. I haven't even had a chance to have a long talk with her about men and women and love and sex. What did you want to ask her? <laughs> Mark has no job, no money. What are they going to live on? Lots of young couples have it a bit rough when they start out. What did your husband do about money when you were first married? Lars didn't get married until he was established in his profession and could support a wife. He was always very organized and careful about money. I remember on our honeymoon, he wore his money belt to bed. <laughs> For years, I thought that was the way men were built. I feel as bad as you do, but all you do is hope that it works out. But Bess is missing out on the best years of her life, her girlhood. She should be going to dances and, and meeting different people. She shouldn't be weighed down with the drudgery of, of, of a husband and, and a home and screeching children. She should have that to look forward to. <laughs> I know it's Bess's life, but... How can I let her throw it away? Well, there's nothing you can do. Well, I have to try. I know. I'll pretend that if she doesn't leave Mark, I'll disown her. I'll tell her she has to choose between Mark and me. You think that might work? Maybe if you threw in a radar range. <laughs> I know. I'll go to Mark and tell him there's insanity in our family. No, he'd probably like that. There has to be something. Listen, I know this may seem like a crazy idea, but have you ever thought about talking to Mark and Bess and telling them how you feel? No lies, no tricks, just simply and honestly what's in your heart. I don't know if I could do that. Why? Haven't you ever in your life just acted spontaneously? Just expressed your feelings without scheming or planning? 
I did once. Well, how'd it turn out? I got pregnant. <laughs> Dan said, when Bess and Mark get here, I'm going to be as straightforward and sincere and honest as I can. And pray that they fall for it. <laughs> Good luck, Phyllis. But I think you're doing the right thing. I just hope I can find the right words. What do you say when your child marries a loony? I think I said, congratulations, Lars. <laughs> Good night, Phyllis. Good night, Jonathan. No, dear. The car's out back. Oh, good night, dear. Good night, Audrey. Hello, Beth. Hi, Mom. Hello, Mar. Hello, Mrs. Lindstrom. Well, come in. Sit down. I'll get us some coffee. Yes. Coffee's all right, isn't it? <laughs> Look, how long is this supposed to go on? I've explained it to you a million times. What more do you want? I just can't believe you could be so thoughtless, so inconsiderate, not telling me where you were going, not phoning. Well, what am I supposed to do, check in with you every 10 minutes? I had an idea for a song. I wanted to be alone for a little while. For six hours? I was just sitting there with my guitar under the stars. I wasn't thinking about the time. Yeah, you weren't thinking about me either. Look. I need to be alone sometimes by myself to think. That's the kind of person I am. Well, I'm the kind of person that gets a little bit worried when her husband just walks out on his honeymoon for six hours and claims to be writing a song. Claims? What do you call this? Brenda! Hey, 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 Brenda! Brenda? Who's Brenda? How should I know? I needed something to rhyme with surrender. It doesn't even rhyme. Oh, yeah. The point is, the next time you decide to wander off like that, you may come back to an empty room. Well, that's fine with me. Well, if that's the way you feel, why don't we just call this whole thing off right now? Maybe we should. Then why don't we just drive right back to Vegas, next door to the chapel where we got married? There's a little place that hands out divorces. Okay. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> Oh, Mark, how do you like it? Uh, I don't feel like any coffee. Me either. Oh, fine. Well, we'll just get right down to it. <laughs> yes? Mark, I know what you both are feeling at this moment. It's a feeling so strong, so overpowering, that you think it's going to last forever. But please believe me, I've lived longer than you, and I know what I'm talking about. The emotions of youth can be very short-lived. You may feel one way about each other now, and you may change your mind completely in an hour. That's why I beg you, don't let a hasty decision based on a fleeting emotion ruin your chances for happiness. And so I'm going to ask you both to look into each other's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and now ask yourself honestly is what I'm feeling for this person right now going to last or is it just something temporary and impetuous <laughs> if you'll both just Look into your hearts. I know you'll come up with the right answer. What do you think, Mark? I think she's right. So do I. She's a wise woman, your mom. <laughs> Bess. <laughs> I think I made myself clear. And thanks for saving our marriage. Don't mention it. Thanks, Mom. Well, it's 
suppose if you two are determined to make a go of this thing, I'll just have to learn to live with it. I won't try to change your mind. But tell me this, Bess. What if I threatened to disown you? What if I said you had to choose between Mark and me? Who would you have chosen? I'd hate to have to make that choice. But if I did, as much as I love you, I'd have to stay with the man I married. Of course. Of course. <laughs> what if I threw in a radar range? <laughs> Let me get back to you. You're watching ALN. Here's what's coming next.